Hello friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. I assure you it is. That's what it is. And I'm in a particularly good mood because this review was so much fun. The Bayou Range A50 Mark III Stereo Integrated Amplifier was just, it just pressed all the right buttons on me. First of all, it's a tube amplifier. Second of all, it's a 300B tube amplifier. Third, the price is right. It's $799 in the US with free shipping. And, but let me step back a second. It's a 300B amplifier. Now the 300B tube is the holy grail for many, many tube loving audiophiles. Strangely though, the tube wasn't originally designed as an audiophile tube. It was designed and came out in 1938 by Western Electric and it was used to amplify phone line signals. And in the 80s, some very smart audiophiles in Japan and a couple in the United States said, hey, this is a good audio tube. And they started building amplifiers around this tube that are still the big deal, really, really important amplifiers. And the tube itself has had many, many, many companies have copied the tube and Western Electric makes new ones now. But uh, they're, they're a very, very expensive tube. You can, the Western Electric tubes right now go from around $800 a pair to $10,000 a pair. I just looked around. $800, that, the $800 pair, that's the price of this entire amplifier with the free shipping, right? So the fact that Bayou Range makes this amplifier for that kind of money is extraordinary. As a matter of fact, I showed this picture of the inside of the, of the chassis to a friend of mine and the outside and I told him the price and he said, that's impossible. This is a very tech savvy audiophile pal. And he said, how do they sell it for that price when it's built like that? It is solidly made. It weighs about 40 pounds. The chassis is stainless steel and aluminum. And it first, I think it's stunning. You can get a tube cage to cover those tubes if you've got small children or pets or something, you're afraid they might touch hot tubes. Good idea, get the tube cage tube amplifiers that call themselves tube amplifiers have tube uh, power tubes and tube input tubes but solid state rectification and to some at least snobby audiophiles they say you got to have tube rectifiers to be truly a tube amplifier and this one does the a50 mark III has a tube rectifier i will list all the details and specs below oh and before i forget to mention it the price is 799 dollars in the u.s with free shipping over Amazon, everybody else, every other country, can buy the amp directly from China Hi-Fi in China for $529 plus shipping, and shipping will be at least a few hundred dollars. So there's no really money to be saved if you buy it from China in the US. So I listened with two speakers primarily for this review. I listened with a triangle Janice trios that I was reviewing just recently and they're a fairly sensitive speaker they're 90 dB sensitivity and then with my current reference Klipsch Cornwall 4s which are high sensitivity speakers 102 dB sensitivity did I mention the power ready I don't think I have so I'm going to say it right now it's 7.6 watts per channel it is a single ended triode amplifier a set as the hip people like to call it so it's not that powerful but if you're not into loud loud this speaker, this, this speaker, this amplifier will probably be loud enough for you. But, you know, your mileage may vary, as they say. So, by the way, it is an integrated amplifier. It doesn't have a remote control, sorry. Um, but it does have three inputs, and there's no digital inputs. It's an all analog design. Now, I was having a bit of a flashback when I was doing this review to the Ryzen A10 amplifier I did not long ago, which also comes from China Hi-Fi in China. That amplifier is, is right now around $300. It's an EL34 amp. It's beautifully made, very similar to this one, but in a smaller, slightly smaller chassis. So if the A50 Mark III is a little out of your price range, check, I will link to my review of the, of the A10. So you got some choices here. The thing about 300B tubes is they're very expensive. Most 300B tubes cost a lot more than this amplifier does as a complete amplifier, right? 
but the tube is the amplifying device itself. The rest of the amplifier is essentially power supply and you know input switcher and something. But the, amp, the, the sound of the amp comes from the 300B itself. And the sound quality of 300Bs is, a, is, is kind of all over the place. So obviously, these tubes, which are made by a company called Pavane, I think I'm saying it correctly, it's a Chinese company, they make some of the most affordably priced 300B tubes. But they also make 300B tubes that are $400 a pair, I think, and up to about $1,000 a pair. Uh, and many, many other companies also offer 300Bs. So in a way, I see this amp, the A50 Mark III, as a starter for a tube curious audiophile. So if you get it and you like it, down the road, you may want to pop in a set of $400 300Bs or $1,000 300Bs if you're feeling flush because the better the tube, the better sound you'll get. But this amp, as listened to, because I did not do any tube rolling, I just used the stock tubes, I was plenty happy with the sound. First of all, the thing that you get is this huge, expansive sound stage. It's not super sharp in focus, but it just blooms. It just opens up. It just <laughs> takes up space in your listening room. It fills the room in ways that solid state amplifiers never quite do. Now, but this amplifier isn't slow sounding or dull, not at all. Um, matter of fact, I think it can sound a little on edge at times. Just there's some grain to it. Again, it's, it's not a high end priced amplifier. It's not going to be perfection. But on the overall ledger of what it does well and what it does not so well, it's very engaging. It's an engaging amplifier. You know, I just kept listening. I started a session. I said, oh, I'll listen to this. I'll listen to this. And then I said, I got I to gotta go. I got other stuff to do. And I said, no, I want to keep listening. That's always a really good sign for any amplifier. Anything I review, it's a good sign. Speaking of that sort of thing, I was listening to jazz in the new harmonic. And uh, I was present at this session. It's David on piano, plus bass, drums, trumpet, and saxophone. And the way each uh, musician is separated out in the soundstage was really, really something. So David is far furthest away from the microphone, because <clears throat> the grand piano is a large instrument. So the other guys are closer, and David seems kind of distant in the mix, on when the other people are soloing, he sounds too small, too too quiet. But then when he solos, he comes up. Now, it's a live to two track recording. They're not pulling up the faders on the mixer to make him louder. No, he's playing louder. They're laying back and you hear him. And the way the A50 Mark III handled that was really, really beautiful. I, I get in goosebumps just thinking about how well that translated from the way it actually was to what I was hearing out of the uh, the Cornwalls. <clears throat> really, really something. I just want to mention, by the way, 7.6 watts. Uh, yeah, it's not a lot of power. But 2 watts do seem to be more powerful than solid state watts. It just, it just has more guts than you'd think it would. And the bass is uh, not super tight or fast, but it has it has weight. It has solidity to it. Now, I'm not going to tell you that it sounds like a $10,000 amplifier in its refinement and, and purity and transparency. That it's not. It has, a, there's grain to the sound. There's a, I wish it was a little sweeter, a little more musical. But then I remember it's a 799 300B amplifier. And that's, that has to be <laughs> accounted for. So, for comparison, I pulled out my first watt J2. It's a solid state class A 20 watt per channel amplifier. And I did the comparison. And right away, the first watt had more weight, more solidity to the base. And the, the A50 Mark III had a little more transient life to it, more sparkle, more jump. So, that is not bad. Now, the, the J2 uh, is about a $4,000 amplifier. So, it's not a fair comparison, but it was a low-powered solid-state amplifier, so I used it as a comparison. Just to put some, just to put the A50's uh, qualities in perspective. Some people think that tube amps are noisier. There's more hiss or hum with a tube amp that you hear through your speakers. 
No, I would say this amp was was pretty darn quiet for tube or solid state. It was it was nice. Like I said, I use those two speakers, the triangle and the Klipsch. And though the Klipsch is more sensitive, a, a higher sensitivity design, I actually felt, strangely enough, that the triangle Janice Trio was a better match to this amplifier. It was a fuller, uh, less clear, less dynamic than the than the Klipsch, but it had a it had a, a rightness to the sound that I really really liked. And that speaker, which I just reviewed, that speaker's gone for thirteen hundred dollars, fourteen hundred dollars a pair with free shipping, and it's gorgeous looking and. That would be a really uh, great way to get into the hobby. If, again, if you're just starting, or even if you're an experienced audiophile. Um, I think every audiophile should, at some point in their journey, live with or own a tube amp. Of course, you can buy used tube amps much more cheaply. Well, not much more cheaply than this, that's for sure. So, yeah. Oh, I forgot something really, really important. A50 Mark III has auto bias, meaning that when you swap tubes, you don't have to get out a voltmeter and, and do the adjustment manually. It just happens all by itself. So it's really easy to swap out 300 V tubes on this amplifier. So I think that about does it. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the latest episode. Right now you're listening to the latest episode of the Audiophiliac Daily Show coming up what is it on like 940 uh, episodes or something so much to see and hear so check some of them out check out the playlist there's playlists for speaker reviews and electronics reviews like this one and music reviews and headphone reviews tons and tons and interviews with famous people and not fam tons uh, if you like what I do, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you already have subscribed, thank you so much. Uh, if you want to do more, check out my Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac, but that's all, there's a link to that directly below. If you like these videos, please give them a thumbs up. I don't remember to say that all the time, but I've heard it's an important thing to the algorithm. And now I think my work really is complete. So I hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.